So making a couple more patterns here. So this is the uh, basic building blocks, the uh, styrofoam plate and the styrofoam cup. I glue a couple of those together to make it about a sixteenth thick. And then uh, the next progression here is I've made this ring gate all around the outside um, of the gate. I cut that on my pin router, just took a kind of a worthless uh, hunk of really lightweight foam that was uh, 3 8 thick that I'd been saving for I don't know what. It's pretty crappy foam. Um, it's so lightweight it's you can't really finish it very well. Uh, but it makes a good gate and a spruce stock because it doesn't take much energy to evaporate it. So I went over to my pin router, punched a hole, and just spun a circular template for that, and then slit it, and just took a toothpick and some hot melt glue and just worked my way around as I was sticking it to it. Got the ring gate stuck to it, stuck the uh, cup to the uh, plate, and I made this little base for it to sit on. So next, what comes uh, is uh, the sprueing and gating, and then I'll make the uh, handle and the uh, uh, spoon last. and. Uh, They'll be ready. All right, well, we've got the pattern making done here. As you can see, I made two of them. They're identical to one another. I did add the, uh, the handle and the spoon to each of them, and everything's all sprued and gated. And similar to the last one, um, I ran uh, a little extra gate up to the handle uh, here. So you can see, and then another one from that gate up to the, the edge of the... Uh, of the spoon so you can see the spoon down in there you can see how it's got that little runner heading up to it there that seemed to work well on the uh, the last go around the spoon filled all that worked fine the big difference is here is this ring gate that i mentioned uh, previously mentioned and then all of this right here which uh, is just my attempt to get hot metal out to the uh, perimeter of the plate um, as quickly as i can with a little bit more massive uh, set of gates here. So straight down Broadway on the main sprue and then out to the ring gate. And uh, you can see that also they also contact, you know, here all the way around on the base. So there's six contact points around that, that inner base and six contact point, points around the outer perimeter. So the smallest distance that it, the metal has to travel from a source of hot metal is probably only an inch and a half um, other than out here in the cup. So I'm hopeful that this will uh, this will get the plate to fill um, reliably um, anyway. We'll see. There's trade-offs and all that because I got to evaporate a lot more foam on getting my way to the actual plate for the stuff that comes out here. So all of this and the ring gates got to be evaporated by the metal. It's going to be it's going to be losing heat that whole time. But uh, hopefully this big sprue and pretty generous uh, fingers you see here um, will get it out there in a hurry and it'll still have enough heat to do the job. So if that doesn't do it, um, I think I'm probably out of bullets um, on that. But uh, anyway, that's the plan and I'm sticking to it. Well, back with you. Had a slight mishap when I was... Uh, after I dipped and was drying the plates, I um, mentioned before when you dip these things and they get the slurry on them, they get quite a bit heavier. And one of the problems with uh, lost foam is is that you actually have to make the uh, the sprue a lot uh, bigger than you really want to because that's what I hang the uh, part by. I let it drip dry. Well, I had it hanging or st stuck on this spike like this. And the medium density fiberboard button that it was sitting there sheared in half and it fell over and actually fell right on. I got another one of these spikes that actually fell right on the spike. And you can maybe see down in there, maybe, oh yeah, right there, you can see down in there, the spike actually went through it and knocked the handle loose right here. I mean, the spike went right through where the handle was attached and hit the handle right here so you can see that the handle separated so i'm going to take a toothpick and dab some uh, hot melt glue in there and reattach it and then patch the hole on the inside um, with uh, some wax and then coat over it and then it actually knocked this out of the way and went all the way through the plate so i'll do the same thing and just fill the the hole right there yeah if you can see it it's 
right here, right there. So I'll fill those holes with a little bit of wax and smooth them out and then uh, just touch it up with uh, a little bit more slurry and hopefully it'll be pretty minor. It also dinged up the, uh, the lip of the cup so I'll probably have an imperfection in the cup from that. And same thing happened to the other one except instead of the, uh, the button shearing, it actually just sheared right off um, and, and the styrofoam broke. So yeah, when they get bigger like that and you got smaller sprues, I've had that happen to me two or three times. So the only solution to it is put multiple you know, contact points on it where just uh, like a bob or something where you can hang it from multiple points on. But uh, I ought to be able to patch it up and uh, get back to the program here. All right, so I patched up the part. Not much really to see, but you can see down there in the bottom of the cup, uh, no hole anymore. And I just uh, touched up all the little spots, reattached and uh, glued the handle back on there, like you see. And and uh, took a little bit more um, slurry and patched up all the spots that uh, had a hole in them. So I think it should be good enough that we can... Uh, have at it now so I got the metal cooking in the pot out there we'll mold this one up real quick and see what we get all right we're gonna have a go at this uh, cup and spoon with uh, the revamped uh, gating and sprueing um, I'm gonna give it all the vacuum I've got should be up around 14 inches and it's 1700 f pouring so it's really hot so it's a really windy day. I'm going to try to get from the furnace to the cup in a very short time. So let's see how it goes. Well, all right, seem to go okay. We'll, we'll see what we get when we uh, dump it out on the ground. Hopefully it'll be a successful pour. Stay tuned. All right, well, it's time to see what we've got. Here it goes.
can't really tell until we get the refractory off. We'll let it chill, I'll blow the refractory off of it and we'll take a look. Well, back with you and I've got a good report. It looks uh, looks really good. Um, I can't find anything wrong with it. So I've got all the refractory off of it. Everything is completely formed. I don't see any flaws. Looks like it's uh, success, like it's surrendered. So, uh, well, I'll take it in and media blast it and clean it up a little bit and we'll take a little closer look at it uh, in good light on the bench top there after I get all the, get it colored up for you. So, be back in a minute. Alright, well, I've cleaned it up, just a little light media blasting so I can see what we've got, but uh, it looks really good. It looks... Um, 100% like the pattern looked. Uh, everything was duplicated um, faithfully on that. Show you a couple of things like where I patched, where I had that uh, little mishap and uh, damaged the pattern. If you take a real close look, zooming in right there above the handle, the base of the handle, you can actually see the little witness mark of the crack in the styrofoam cup that was left from that. So, and then likewise, down here below, the handle, I think you can probably see the little mark on the plate where uh, the spike went through the plate. And then same thing on the back side. If you look up underneath that gate there, you can just see where I patched it. But other than that, there's only one other place. And that's why I said I dinged the lip of the cup. If you look really close right there, you can see the ding from where I dropped it. So. Literally every little flaw and imperfection is being replicated there. You can see the spoon. Everything's formed nicely. No flaws on, on that. The uh, detail on the uh, edge of the plate itself. There. Come back a little away from it there. And then of course the, uh, the gating system that you saw in the pattern. So. I had a contact point around this diameter here, that inner diameter, and then I had a contact point around the ring gate, around the whole perimeter of that. So, what it ends up being here is uh, this is the plate. Everything in the plate and the cup is about 60 thousandths uh, wall thickness, and it gets a little thicker than that at the base because I double up the material thickness when I glued it to the base. But uh, the, uh, the, the um, stem of the spoon, it's also about 60 thousandths. I whittled that uh, down. And uh, the cup handle, that's about, uh, that's about an eighth of an inch or so. So uh, we'll see. I've got, uh, so here's the laying down next to uh, trial number one and two. And then I've got, uh, got one more pattern. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, I suppose. I'll, uh, I'll cast it, and then I'll probably degate um, one of these two, assuming I get this one successfully. I'll degate one of them, and then maybe just for, uh, you know, posterity's sake. I don't know. We'll see what I do. They're, they're worthless trinkets, but they, they were a pretty uh, interesting exercise in lost phone casting to see, you know, just what was possible. Um, again, when I poured this one, I poured it at 1700F, which is smoking hot for aluminum. And um, my staged uh, vacuum system, I've got two three-stage blowers um, that I showed earlier. Uh, when you stage them together, I looked there, I was actually drawing 18 inches of mercury. So, you know, I was well, uh, I was well over, I was over a half an atmosphere of vacuum there. So I was, I was pulling on it pretty hard. But uh, anyway, it's surrendered, and uh, I'll uh, sometime here I'll cast up the second one and degate it and get back with you after I degated it. That's all for now. All right, well, since I had uh, 
two good castings. I decided to uh, degate one, so I took her all off in pieces that you see sitting over there. And here's the degated piece um, all cleaned up. So I managed to get the uh, gates off of it and uh, um, blend where the uh, contact points were on, on that. So, and you can see kind of looking at the edge there, the, the thin 16th inch edge on the plate. And then the same thing on the cup. So, I don't know, I think we can probably stick a fork in this one. She's pretty much done. So I've got myself a uh, souvenir saucer, cup, and spoon. And uh, I've also got uh, trials one, two, and three. Maybe what I'll do is just mount those all on a board and mount that one there and just show that third time's a charm and takes me three times to get it right, I guess. But uh, that's it. So a sixteenth of an inch thick uh, sand casting in lost foam. It is possible. It takes some desire and some effort to do it, but uh, it is possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see if I can get all this uh, video cleaned up and into something that makes uh, a little sense to watch and listen to. Take care. Thanks for watching.